The Boston Celtics are by far the most dangerous and best overall team left in these NBA Finals. Really, in my opinion, their competition for the NBA Championship this year was the Milwaukee Bucks, and that team single-handedly got demolished by Jimmy Butler. Uh, behind Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, I think the Celtics have the best chance to win the 2023 NBA Championship, and I'm going to tell you why here in today's video. And no, I'm not just copying Jimmy High Roller's video. I promise you. Uh, I actually think the Celtics team is loaded. I've been talking about them all year. Behind the Time Lord, Marcus Smart, elite defense. Malcolm Brogdon's a dog. Such an underrated pickup. And then Al Horford, even though he's 85 years old, still kicking for him. Uh, so make sure you hit the like button. Leave me a comment down below as it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to stick around till the end of the video. And all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started looking at the favorites. Question mark, question mark. Uh, but I do not think these... I don't think anybody's beating the Celtics. I mean, they just beat a good Hawks team, beat them in six. Um, now, don't get, it, don't get it twisted. That's a good Hawks team as the seven seed, a team that's been to the Eastern Conference Finals just two years ago with a better team, honestly, this year. Should have beat them in five, but Trey Young pulled off some magic in the garden. Now, Danilo Gallinari has been rumored to be returning for these playoffs. Um, he obviously was not back in round one. Al Horford's going to need a little bit of reinforcements on the bench there. Uh, but, you know, hopefully, I mean, they made a deal at the deadline, which we'll talk about later. But hopefully Gallo can come back, and man, that would just put this team over the top. But the thing that is the leading force for this Celtic squad is their defense. Behind the Time Lord, behind Marcus Smart, this team is tough to score on. Eight and a half points, eight and a half rebounds for Robert Williams in the regular season. He was good in the first round series against the Atlanta Hawks. And, you know, the reigning most efficient or highest graded defensive player in the NBA in terms of defensive rating continues to prove it. Yet again, he's one of the best defenders in the NBA, despite the fact that he was injured early on in the year. Uh, 1.4 assists to go with 1.3 blocks in somewhat limited minutes. And then you also have the reigning defensive player of the year with Marcus Smart. 11.2 points and 3.4 rebounds. But on top of his defense, on top of his somewhat limited scoring ability, the thing I've been most impressed with uh, with Marcus Smart has been his assist to turnover ratio. Last year, that was the, the Achilles heel for the Boston Celtics. This year, not really the case. They bring in Marcus Smart to help him handle the ball. They come back more experienced or they bring in Brogdon to help him handle the ball. They come back more experienced, and then Marcus Smart, 6.4 assists and 2.3 turnovers, as well as 1.6 steals. At one point, he was averaging closer to 7.5 assists. I really like Marcus Smart this year for that Celtics squad. Now, since December the 1st, this Celtics defense has drastically improved. They were 20th in defensive rating and 14th in opponent's points per game, and that was before the Time Lord ever played a single game this season. You insert the Time Lord into the lineup, and all of a sudden, this becomes a powerhouse of a defense. Right now, they have the third best defensive rating in the NBA and the fifth best opponent's points per game. That is some elite, elite it just shows you how valuable the Time Lord is. And then, even with an interim rookie first-year head coach, Joe Mazzulla, last year they were 12th in points per game, 7th in offensive rating. He has taken this team to new heights on the offensive side of the ball, of course behind their dominant duo. The dominant, the most dominant wing duo in the NBA, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. The Kawhi and Paul George of the Eastern Conference, although Kawhi and PG might be the Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown of the West. That, that is up for debate. If they win a championship this year, I think you got to hand it to them. 26.5 points per game and 7 rebounds in the regular season for Jalen Brown, but now he's looking like Batman in the playoffs. He's an absolute dog. I mean, it's going to be tough to stop Jalen Brown as the second option, averaging 27-7 and seven on 50% shooting from the field. I mean, what are you going to do about that? He's practically unguardable when you're focused on Jason Tatum, and then all of a sudden here comes Jalen Brown completely throwing you for a loop offensively because... I mean, your best perimeter defender is on Tatum, and then you got to worry about JB too. It's it's an anomaly to stop Jason Tatum. Thirty points a game and nine rebounds between the two of them, averaging close to sixty a game. Elite offensive scores, elite offensive weapons. Forty six percent from the field, thirty five percent from three for Tatum. Dude is he's a problem down in the paint or on the perimeter wherever he wants to take you he's a mismatch also five assists one thing that he has been working on as he set a record for the most turnovers in a playoff run last year uh, 
But I think the most underrated move for the Boston Celtics this year was bringing in Malcolm Brogdon. He averaged 14 and a half points, four rebounds, three and a half assists in somewhat limited minutes in the regular season. I don't know if they're trying to keep him ready for the NBA playoffs or what, but he shot at 48% from the field, 45% from three, and only played in 26 minutes a night. Uh, you look at the per 36 numbers because, of course, he was not playing very many minutes. You look at the per 36 numbers, and it's kind of off the charts. It's, it's pretty crazy what he was doing in such short amount of time, but per 36 averaged 22, 6.5, and 5.5. And and I mean, those are pretty dang good numbers. I expect him to continue to play much more minutes in the playoffs than he ever did in the regular season. And then, of course, with the per 36 numbers, he's shooting the same efficiency. Uh, now, the help for... The Celtics in the post is going to be Danilo Gallinari. Um, Of course, not sure when he's coming back yet. Al Horford is old, but he's still playing well. Ten points a game, six rebounds, three assists in the regular season for the Celtics. And, you know, of course, he's got that playoff experience. He's going to kick it up a notch when it comes to the playoffs. So far, he has started to do that. Um, 50% from the field, 46% from three, and a block per game in the regular season. I mean, that's just, that's elite right there. For, what, a 36-year-old? I mean, not too many guys in the league doing that at 36. Of course, you got Braun at, like, 45 doing whatever he wants. He just took a logo three against the Grizzlies. They're up 32 points in game six doing whatever the heck they want. But the help that he has gotten, Mike Muscala, five points a game, three rebounds in 15 minutes since coming over at the deadline from the Oklahoma City Thunder. He is another big body that can stretch the floor, though. A seven-footer who shoots at 36% from three and 43% from the field overall. However, I don't think Mike Muscala is the guy that's going to put you over the top to win an NBA championship. It's going to be Rob Williams. It's going to be Al Horford down in the paint until Danilo Gallinari comes back. Maybe a little Luke Cornett or Mike Muscala in spurts. But overall, that's who you're going to be having down in the paint right now for the Celtics. Now, the most underrated flaming hot player in the league right now is Derek White. He's one of the best role players in the entire NBA. Uh, Of course, he had his career high right after the deadline against my Charlotte Hornets where he didn't miss a shot and dropped like 35. He's crazy. 13 points per game almost, 3.5 rebounds, 4 assists. Very, very underrated player here in Boston. You saw the impact he had on them winning. I mean, they made a lot of moves last year at the deadline, but the main one bringing in Derek White 46% 46% from the field, 38% from three. Still in 26 minutes, they've got a lot of guard depth. I mean, this Celtics team, it's going to be tough for anybody to stop them. Looking at what's what's ahead for the Celtics, what they got left, um, of course, beating the Hawks, the East is wide open now that the number eight seed upset the number one seed. Jimmy Buckets and company taking down the Milwaukee Bucks. Just made a whole video about it. If you want to go watch it, make sure to check it out. Um, posted it on April the 29th. Who is left? Is The 76ers are definitely the best competition left in the East, but you have Robert Williams down low to handle, or at least try and handle Joel Embiid. I mean, you're going to be playing the Knicks or the Heat if you make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. That couldn't be drawn up much better if you're the Boston Celtics. Um, best case scenario, honestly, going into the playoffs, seeing either the Knicks or the Heat standing in your way in the Eastern Conference Finals. But behind their all-NBA wing duo, the best wing duo in the league right now, behind the Time Lord who can lock anybody down in the paint, behind Marcus Smart who can lock anybody up on the perimeter, Malcolm Brogdon, such a great addition, and then now Horford. This Celtics team is clicking on all cylinders, and that is why I think they will be winning this year's NBA championship. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment. And with all the being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.